So <laughs> Jed, Jed and I were introduced by Evan Money, who's in the book, Dear Friend. And um, Jed and I had a great talk yesterday and uh, he had an associate on with him. Uh, he's doing some really great work that complements our work. And uh, Jed, um, Nat is um, the, our senior VP of um, private sector relations. He's also the chairman of the National Association of African Americans and Human Resources. And he owns an HR company. They get all that right, Nat? You, as, as the uh, Stan Scott would say, Stu Scott would say, you must be butter because you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> you're on a roll, brother. <laughs> right. Susan is with the Peace Center in Pennsylvania. They're one of our national strategic partners. Uh, they've been doing a phenomenal work with um, leading sessions uh, of film screenings and book readings and things like that. And Susan is the point person uh, there. Danny Thomas is the executive director. And Susan is uh, the love is the answer extraordinaire person there. <laughs> and then Shannon, who's uh, um, she said she's currently working, so she's muting her video and sound. Um, she is in business development uh, with us, and she's in Columbia, Maryland. So we Nat's in Columbia, Maryland as well. Susan's in Pennsylvania. Of course, I'm in Henderson, Nevada. So, nice to Jed, meet you, want Jed. To... Nice, nice to meet you, you Jed. <laughs> Jed, you want to share a little bit with with uh, with our folks a little bit about what you do? And this is being recorded too, so whoever doesn't um, join us now, they'll be able to see it later. So you're going to be talking to a wider audience. Sure, I'll I'll try to be brief, which is a challenge for me. Uh, first, I'll say that I was a huge Stuart Scott fan, so that resonates with me. Uh, <laughs> I often still try to be as cool as the other side of the pillow, but rarely, rarely succeed. So I started about a year ago an organization called Mission Peace, and that's why I'm wearing all the all the gear. I went and grabbed all the Mission Peace gear I could. I'm sending you some, AJ, in the mail. Uh, really what broke my heart during the COVID lockdowns was seeing a lot of my friends fighting. And in particular, in the aftermath of the, of the George Floyd incident, I started thinking about what I had been doing for 10 years, which was training teachers to keep calm and work with really difficult students. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, some of these skills would transfer really well to my friends in law enforcement. I have quite a few pretty close friends in law enforcement. And I would hear often a lot of the same complaints uh, that I heard from teachers. I think there are a lot of a lot of parallels in in some of the challenges and how uh, beset and put upon they often feel and and now nobody understands how hard it is uh, the job I do, but particularly these emotional intelligence skills and and really understanding kind of what drives human behavior has always been a fascination of mine. So for ten years I worked for the Love and Logic Institute and I was especially training teachers and staff in really tough locations uh, where they had a lot of behavior problems. And I just believed I could do it. So I set out, uh, I stayed up all, all night, one night praying and thought, okay, am I supposed to do this? And the next morning, uh, literally 13 people contacted me and said, Hey, I want to help you do this. I had posted, you know, an interest in it on Facebook. And so I didn't expect it to be much other than just me going around offering trainings. And uh, very quickly it grew into something bigger I connected with Paul, who uh, AJ met yesterday, who is a former NFL player who really wants to talk to young people about uh, our first principle. We came up with our six core principles, and the first one is respectful engagement. And part of it is deciding ahead of time that I'm going to be respectful. Uh, to me, that's the real secret for people who do things well is they have an intentionality uh, that they set out ahead of time to, I know how I'm going to behave, and I have a plan for that. So he's going to teach that principle to young people, uh, particularly when they encounter law enforcement or other authority figures. And then meanwhile, we're going to teach our skills, which seem to match really, really well with the, uh, the love principles and uh, try to. The other thing that I hope to do is, is help reward the good ones and weed out the bad ones. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, if the culture, I've, I've done this in schools a lot, if the culture of a school becomes so positive 
those few uh, kind of toxic educators can't stand it. And they're not, you know, they're not fitting in, they're not supported, they, they want to go somewhere else or do something else. So I've been able to consult with some schools to really help turn their culture around. And that's something I would also like to do for law enforcement, where I didn't mention this one to AJ yet, but we're developing a, an assessment tool that we call resiliency assessment, but what we're really looking for is jerks. Uh, <laughs> help, a, help a chief or, you know, someone in leadership at a department identify some red flags that, that are kind of blind in the, in the assessment where they wouldn't necessarily know that's what we're looking for. Uh, but my ultimate goal is peace. My ultimate goal is to be a peacemaker and see the community getting along better and law enforcement getting along better with the community. How's that? Perfect. <laughs> Jed, where are you based out of? Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay, so Air Force Academy, huh? All right. Yes, I, I actually am hearing planes right now uh, flying over from the from the base. Uh, I'm next. I'm closer to the other base, but then the Air Force Academy, I can still see almost from my house. All right. Nice. That was one of my stops on my uh, 2014 50 state golf trip. I stopped. I didn't golf at the academy, but I stopped there and. And uh, that was a real spiritual moment for, for me being an Air Force guy. That was an and awesome This is time. such an Air Force uh, town. I mean, just every other person I run into is Air Force or former Air Force. Yeah. Yeah, yeah AJ's got me beat um, in terms of states. He's got two states on me. I've got 48, uh, the 50. So uh, Alaska and North Dakota, I have not been. But uh, your state of Colorado, I used to work for little small mom and pop company called Marriott Corporation and I <laughs> helped open up the uh, Denver Marriott many years ago and then I was further south if you've heard of a place called Pagosa Springs Colorado oh it's gorgeous yeah we, we've been there and up to uh, Silverton and Durango so uh, that's a little south of you but uh, been down there yep been out there I'm only at 46 states so you can feel better You've got me by two. and We'll both catch AJ soon. Yep, yep. I got to find yep. an excuse to go to West Virginia. That's one of the ones I've never been to. Oh, West Virginia? Well, that's a neighbor. So for, I'm in Maryland, so West Virginia is a neighbor. So. so what's the other two? West Virginia, what's the other one? Uh, I've, got, I've got four I haven't hit. I haven't hit uh, uh, Rhode Island, Maine, West Virginia and New Hampshire. Oh, so you got to come over here on the East Coast then. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Sure. There's just, okay. there are too many little ones. All those little ones <laughs> in the top right corner, it's hard to get them all. Yeah. Well, they're, they're small enough where you can spend a day in them and then you're good. <laughs> yep. Hey, Rhode oh Island my, is so oh small. God. Let make that a half a day in Rhode Island. <laughs> That's, that's what I did on on my trip. I some of the states I would uh, I would only stay in for long enough to play eighteen holes of golf and then go to the next state. Yeah, states <laughs> like that you got to qual if you qualify maybe four to eight hours. That that's a residency, so you're good. It counts. <laughs> I didn't tell AJ. My my brother used to live in Ellicott City, uh, Maryland, for for years. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Well, hey, that, that's right up the street from us. And uh, Lois and Harvey have joined us. Hello to both of you. All right. So we're going to jump in. Um, I'm going to pull up a. Um, I'm going to pull up a Google Doc that I created, and bear with me while I find it. Oh, hello everybody. While he was doing, I had stepped away and I couldn't unmute. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I think it's, I think it's this one, but I have to bear with me here. Find the right sheet. Okay, can y'all see that? Just slide it over a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Yep, Does, I can. Is that the, 
Is that the Google sheet with a welcome to the love is the answer day? Yes. Yeah. Got that in okay. pink. Great. So um, here I'm, I'm going to post the um, invitation to share this. Let's see here. I'm going to copy the link. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to put it in the chat in a moment. Um, this will be inviting you to this document. And it's a document where we're going to have all the committee people from every state put their information in here. I got a checklist of things and I want to go through that so we can add some things to it. But, um, you know, like if you're in Alabama, you put your first name, last name, role, any notes that are pertaining to the to the local event, like, you know, I secured 20 burritos, you know, whatever, I secured 10 gallons of paint, stuff like that. Um, and then as much information as everyone feels comfortable putting in, uh, there, there were title company numbers, address, so forth. Um, we'll see if we're missing anything. Oh, email, yeah, email address. Um, let me put that in there right now. Insert column. Okay. Um, so we're going to have everybody put their information in this sheet, and that way they can communicate what's going on and also communicate with their other team members. And um, take a look at the checklist. I've just started it, it's not complete. But take a look at it and see if there's anything there that um, I've missed so far so we can add those things to it. You got finding the location, obtaining permits. Um, Lois, I know you and I still have to talk. Um, so we'll do that and we can figure out what kind of direction we can give to people about obtaining permits. Um, get partner organizations and i guess if it's a private building i don't know if you need to obtain any permits Lotus, maybe you can help me with that maybe you just need the owner's permission um pretty much the owners if it's on a private location just the owner's permission okay and then i guess if we're you know requesting to do it on a city or county or township owned uh property we obviously <laughs> yeah, you have to get permits. Yeah. And uh, pretty much probably for city or township, you'll also need the um, permission from the town council. Okay. So AJ, uh, quick question. Um, you are looking to do this um, on site and not Zoom? Yeah, yeah. So this um okay. This love is the answer day. Let me um to answer that, um, let me hop out of here. And um go into another share. Okay, there we go. And Harvey, I have uh, I've not added anything to what I was going to add to uh, from the last time. So, is Harvey still with us? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I am. I'm just quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, um, this year is gonna we're gonna go back to uh, live events. So okay. last year we did it just uh, Zoom. First year we did it. Um, 12 locations, uh, live events, but then we all zoomed in from one location, Columbia, Maryland, to, um, uh, to, to give a national address. Um, last year, it was all Zoom. It was a four-hour uh, Zoom program. This year, we're going back to um, live events, and the, the goal will be to get a mural painted in all 50 states in several US territories and on 
at least one on every continent. Um, so we feel that the, the mural uh, painting event can be something that even if we're back to social distancing and you know the things take a turn for the worst, um, we can still do that. Outdoors, uh, for the most part, in some places, they might do one indoors, depends on their choice. And also, I'm asking everyone to do a, a, a covered or indoor alternate location, just in case they have uh, bad weather uh, on that day. So, um, yeah, and then we're going to, after the uh, mural painting, we are going to do a Zoom. And some people will still be in the middle of theirs. Some will have completed, some will be in the middle. But um, Nat, we're going to have everybody do a live broadcast from their location. Okay. And so they're, um, they'll show off what they're working on. And hopefully some of them will be completed. Many of them will probably be still in progress, but they'll showcase uh, what they've done, you know, how they've put um, their spin on uh, love is the answer in their community. And then, of course, we'll have other activities going on, uh, which we'll want to discuss some of that today. Um, some of the other things that each event will have, food and music, stuff like that. Harvey? I'm wondering if you're going to end with a global Zoom, as I think you call it, mm -hmm. and if you're going to be set up for Zoom, is there any advantage to actually starting the Zoom from like the beginning and highlighting different groups as they get underway and just rotate this group for a few minutes, this group for a few minutes in the hour or so before the global Zoom so people get a sense of this is building and these things are coming to completion. Just, just thinking about that. Um, that's, that's kind of the purpose of the Zoom itself the, the four hour block of time to, um, uh, to, to, to rotate to different locations throughout the world, throughout the country and the I world. I thought you were only gonna do that the final hour though. And I was wondering if no. it started earlier. Okay, um, it'll, I'll that'll be and listen. Yeah, that's all right. It'll, no, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, it'll, it'll, um, it'll be set up in such, it'll be almost like a telethon you know, where we're just going to, we'll have maybe four minutes of, of talk uh, from someone at a central, you know, central point location, like we might have a couple of hosts chiming in. And then we'll go, hey, let's, let's go to Alaska. Let's go to Juneau, Alaska and see what they're doing there. We'll have them on for five minutes. And then we'll come back. And then we'll go to the next location. Mm -hmm. AJ, so um, for my information, coming in late, I, I, I know we've got September 17th, but East Coast time, you're talking, what time are you thinking this is going to start to end? Um, let me uh, check that real quick. I forget what time. Because yeah, that'll help me on this end to secure the facility and all and block out the time. Yeah, yeah, let me... Um... Let me go to my calendar real quick. I'll be right back. Well, okay. I'll be here, but I'll be looking at the calendar. All right. Um, oh, I passed it. Stop. Okay. So it's going to be uh, two to six Pacific, five to nine Eastern. Okay. We only work half days out here on the West Coast, so. All of us. <laughs> okay. We we go surfing and golfing the rest of the day. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm going to pop that in the chat. Okay. 
2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific. Okay. I'll put that on the on that um, PDF too that, that I popped up on the screen for a second. I'll pop that back up there real quick. Um, where is it? There we go. Mm -hmm. So just a quick review. Um, this is the page that'll have all the will includes and uh, groups of peace officers and other community members will be painting murals on the same day. There will be food, entertainment, wellness sessions, other activities at each location. Uh, the day will end with that global Zoom. Everyone will show off their work. Um, it's going to be a fun, meaningful, inspiring, empowering celebration of life and the power of love. Uh, and then uh, the rest of that there. Any group that's licensing the film may host an official Love is the Answer Day event. So the host of the event does have to be a licensee of the of the film. Okay, AJ, uh, is it possible for you to send this to us, this list? Yeah, Please. yeah, we, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I need to fill out some more things in here. Um, okay. Before I do that, but it'll be in the, um, it'll, it'll be in the video that we'll post, but um, I'm hoping to, get the other stuff filled out that needs to be filled out before I share it um, over the weekend. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. And let's see, let me stop sharing on this. Okay, so any, any thoughts about um, activities? that can take place at each location other than the mural painting itself and music and food, and stuff like that? I have a question. Um, is there any kind of funding available or fundraising opportunities? Yeah, so we're gonna get into, uh, into that um, as we fill out these, um, as we start to fill out the groups, start to get group leaders for each event, um, we'll start to include fundraising and other aspects in the in the Zooms. Um, we're just not there yet, you know, for numbers wise, you know, to uh, to be able to start having those conversations. But um, we will go over all the different ways that people can raise sponsorship and get grants and things like that. Um, fortunately, it's not going to require a lot of money. You know, in most cases, uh, we're going to be looking for a simple donation of supplies, you know, um, and and uh, we'll we'll try to incorporate um, art supply companies and things like that in the sponsorships. Yeah, but it's going to be minimal cost for you know for each group. Uh, they'll they'll probably have to spend less than a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars to. Get their murals done. So we'll also reach out to groups that, you know, groups of artists and others that you know that have uh, supplies uh, already, uh, so that they can bring their supplies with them. So, any thoughts about um, activities that can that can be promoted to take place on that day in conjunction with the with the mural painting things that might be you know yeah lois yes on the uh on the murals um are we looking at a specific color i know um the black lives matters movement's pretty much using yellow are we looking to use a different, say a bright, bright red or, or a different color? So the, uh, the only color that will be standard, um, and I'm gonna share my screen again, will be the Love is the Answer logo, which is this. Okay. <laughs> Harvey's got the book. I'll hold that book up again, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Wait, what's, uh, what's Harvey showing? I he's can't showing see. the cover of the book. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that um, that right there, uh, the logo will be the... Um, That's that'll the, be the Okay. Yeah. So what we'll do is each mural will have the Love is the Answer uh, logo um, stenciled in and we'll supply uh, the tools, the, the tools to be able to stencil the logo and we'll supply the, um, um, we're going to wind up probably having to supply the paint for that. And then everything else will just be in a local expression, you know, all, all around it will be a local expression of what love looks like in their community. So they'll be able to choose whatever colors they want. Uh, okay. If they're in Pittsburgh, they might want to go with, you know, black and gold, you know, for the Steelers, you know, even though I hate the Steelers. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I hate the Steelers. <laughs> I have to. I'm a Ravens fan. That's part of the job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I respect what? But you don't have to hate. You don't have to hate one because you love the other. <laughs> now we talked about love is sports the hate is different. <laughs> sports hate is different. You have to. You have to. You know. You have to have this this loving hate for your for your for your rival. <laughs> I, I can back that up because I'm I'm required by law to hate the Raiders and I and I do. So that's the only it's the only group that I hate. <laughs> um, speaking of, of sports, what about, I know the venues are going to be different, but what about some kind of little, uh, maybe like a free throw contest with, with kids and, and police officers or something, something, some sort of a friendly uh, thing that might, might draw people out. I like that, Jed. Yeah, like that's awesome. Too. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Go ahead, Harvey. And since it's on a Friday, um, activities for little kids should be incorporated so parents can come and do the painting and the little kids are occupied with something. Nice. Um, do you think that they would have uh, the little kids would have fun painting painting the mural as well? Um, I could I could see a little kid separate mural, so, <laughs> with fewer restraints on the ultimate picture. But that's just me. <laughs> they could they could do whatever they want on like the bottom the bottom third, however high they can reach. <laughs> give them uh, give them chalk instead of paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Now, are we thinking about nice. the murals being up or on the street? Um, these are going to be permanent installations, so they would be they would be up on. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mural on a street versus on a wall. I think we should go for the for the for the walls. Not every place is going to have a wall that's suitable. Okay. So I, you think I, as I was thinking, asking that, I was thinking about. Uh, the city, if we do it, and my vision has been to have um, painted Love is the Answer on Michigan Avenue downtown, but we don't have any walls downtown where it would be, you know, visible. We have one back about, oh, that leads off, leads off of the um, parking lot, but, but still. That's not, it's not on the main thoroughfare. Okay, okay. So you, th you think uh, street painting would be a viable option? Well, I was, you know, that has been all my, my thought from over a year ago, okay? And had just not, <clears throat> had just not acted on it. And, um, but down Michigan Avenue. But I don't know if they'll let us close Michigan Avenue for an hour or two in the middle of a Friday afternoon either. You know, so <laughs> it might be something that would need to be done overnight, you know, or whatever. 
and reveal the next morning. So, uh, I mean, that's just a thought. Or we could move it out of downtown, but that was my thought for it to be downtown. Okay. Okay. But let, I, let me I just was thinking, thinking uh, that there might be places where if there's not a wall, maybe it could be done on a giant, <clears throat> like a tarp that could end up being hung up. Um, or if it's done by people who are better artists than me, and then it, it gets revealed at the time. Um, and then that, that kind of goes with maybe little kids are nearby drawn on the on the street or the parking lot or the sidewalk with, with chalk, but the, the, the one that looks good uh, for the cameras is either, you know, hung up or revealed, you know, probably some people are, are gonna, and I realize that the point isn't to make it look all beautiful and professional, but it, you don't want it to look so, uh, so sloppy that people go, what is that? That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, uh, my, 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 my preference, strong preference would be to either find a wall or build one. Mm. Yeah, like Lois, are there are there places downtown that um, that could possibly become a site that doesn't have a building or a wall and maybe there's a spot even for a um a love garden where in part of that garden there could be a um a wall constructed not downtown no okay no not downtown we really okay. have um uh, we really have an old-fashioned downtown setting you know for maybe four blocks straight through on Michigan Ave. And it's, uh, we've maintained a lot of the historic buildings and stuff. So that's how it's, you know. Okay. Um, well, Nat knows our downtown and so does uh, Harvey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for, Nat, I'm thinking of asking uh, Tycho and uh, growing hope to work together with me on this. Good point. Yeah, good point. I have a question about permanent. Yeah. Are mo are permits possible for permanent murals in most places? I hadn't even thought about that. Well, uh, Harvey, if it's on a wall, um, it would I would I would assume it would be permanent until it either wears off or is refreshed or painted over. Okay. Then I think too, Harvey, at least off the top of my head, um, I know if we do something here in Howard County, um, depending on if it's a public building then yeah, those permits would definitely, uh, we would have to run it through the um, various zoning and um, Bureau of Permits and all here to get there okay. And that that would, we could do it, but I don't know how long it would take. And then also designating the particular site. Um, if it's a county and AJ, you know, by living in Columbia um, and, and Howard County, what that logistics would be in terms of whether it would be a permanent mural on a wall, or as I think Harvey, you mentioned, um, uh, a, a or Jed, you mentioned a tarp or something yeah. that could be hung uh, on a um, uh, regular basis or an annual basis where, and then you could move it around. So those are just thoughts in my head, taking into account the permanency of a wall versus or in conjunction with maybe a tarp that could be painted and then moved around so people other people could see it that may not even visit downtown Columbia AJ. So those are just thoughts yeah. that I had really kicking it around. Oh, that's a great idea, Nat, because of course Columbia Association, um, you know, rules and regulations 
definitely yep. would not get approval to do anything on a building. So either, you know, a you know movable tarp, or even if we did something, you know, in in Baltimore, for example, um, yeah. MICA, the the art mm -hmm. school is yep. downtown mm -hmm. Baltimore, so right. that could be a great place to kind of reach yep. out to you know get some of the students involved as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Good point, Shannon. I didn't even think about MICA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If yeah, I think we, folks out there, of, MICA is the Maryland Institute College of Art. Just for correct. it, yeah. M I C A, yeah. um, MICA. That's what we call it here, the Maryland Institute College of Arts. And this is totally a four-year institution that deals with art, sculpture, um, paintings. You name anything in the arts, that's what they they do. So just yeah, wanted so we, to give you an FYI. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, we, we might want to reach out to them and reach out to the art schools in, in all of these cities. Um, I think it's really important that we do a, um, a permanent location versus even if we, even if they wind up painting it on a tarp, you know, let's say um, the installation itself, I really want it to be set, you know, at one location so that people can come back to that um, uh, I wouldn't want it to be like, you know, stored and then brought out for special occasions or, or moved around really want it to be a place where people can go back to and say this is, this is what we did on such and mm -hmm. such a day, you know. Um, so it, Shannon had a question about the time question sorry going back to the event time. Should we be concerned with the sun setting at seven on the East Coast. No, not at all, because um, we there will actually be parts of the world that this will be done where they might uh, be on zoom live at 4 a.m or 11 o'clock at night um so it's just a matter of um uh setting up some lights sounds good okay <laughs> yeah. yeah and of course if we if we are starting the Zoom at five o'clock Eastern, um, we'll obviously try to get the sites that are about to have sunset coming soon. We'll try to get those sites on first. We'll arrange them uh, that way. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting, Shannon's mentioning the seven o'clock sundown time already and we haven't reached the the 10 o'clock <laughs> here. I'm, the, I'm on the East Coast too, Shan. I'm in Michigan. So I had I had to Google to look it up to see what time the sun sets in September. I'm glad you did because it's it's coming soon. Yeah. yeah. After after Sunday, everything is downhill. <laughs> yep. So we've got uh, about two and a half months to go un until this big day. So what I'm gonna ask all of you to do between now and uh, next week is to um, try to find two or three people that they don't have to be in your area, preferably not in your area, two or three people that you know that are in different states um, that, uh, that would be willing to become either a team leader or just a, a committee member and to invite them uh, to next week, because next week we're, we're gonna start to dive into some of the nuts and bolts. And by two weeks from now, I, I'm hoping that we can have somewhere between 10 and 20 um, teams starting to form. So we can really you know, start to get into the, the real work of putting all this together. It's not as complicated as it might seem, um, you know, but we realistically over the next six weeks, we have to get all 50 states on board. So we have about six weeks to do that. And then four weeks of solid planning. AJ, do you have a list of states that are already on a board so that, um, if we can know if we have someone look to have find someone in states that are not on board yet. 
Um, we have just this, I just put the link to the Google Doc in the um, chat. And so if you all would, would uh, fill in your information in, in the respective state, when you get a chance, you don't have to do that now. When you get a chance, that will give us the start of our list. Okay. And then you can share that uh, link with the two or three people that you talk with between now and next Friday um, so they can put their information in there uh, as well. Okay. Now I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be doing my best to send invitations to as many people as I possibly can to represent as many of the states as possible. Harvey? Your Google Doc asked me to request access from you. Okay. So let me go there and see if I see. I wonder if it came to me in an email. Did you do did you um did you do that, Harvey? Oh, here we go. I see one from Jed. All right, I'm going to open the sharing settings. I clicked on your link and it asked me for access. Okay. Okay, I just did the same and it says request sent. You'll get an email letting you know if the file is shared with you. <laughs> oh, cool. All right, so I'm, I'm answering those now and y'all can let me know. I see Jed, I see Lois's. Harvey, did you hit the little box that says request access? Let me go back and look. It just dropped in. Got it. Oh, here we go. All right, cool. I'm answering them now as I get them. I was just a little slow. Thank you, Lois. <laughs> no problem. And Harvey, you're next. Here we go. Okay, I it dropped in my email and I, I opened it, but I won't try to fill it out now. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. So we know that works. That's good. If you have any trouble, just let me know. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go back to the sheet real quick. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So the checklist, help me out here. Um, see if we, I know I'm missing stuff. I just started this, but find location, obtain permits, get partner organizations on board, um, fill out the committee. And I put categories of committee members there, specifically these, these types of people. And I wanna get your opinion on this, but with everything that we do with the gardens, with murals, with all of our activities, mentoring, we want to include peace officers. We want to include veterans. We want to include um, teens. We want to include formerly incarcerated people. We want to include leaders. Um, and I just put the, the the number two in there as a just a, just as a backup, just in case one drops out. We've got we've got one. Um, want to get your thoughts on that, see if I'm missing any important groups or if I should word those groups differently or whatever. AJ, one of the groups that you mentioned in terms of um, uh, formerly incarcerated, having been on that, um, that involvement, we don't call them that now as uh, returning citizens. Okay, I'll change that right now. Yeah. Now, what if they've been out of prison for 10 years? Do you still call them a returning citizen? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, we wouldn't use the term formally incarcerated or anything like that now. We basically would say they're returning citizens, and even though they've been out for X number of years, they're still returning citizens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And we don't call them any more uh, ex-offenders anymore. So again, I reason why I say that I served on our governor's commission on um, what we call it back then, ex-offender employment, and I've still been involved in that. And the trends now is to call them all returning citizens. Yeah. All right. Cool. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll be glad when the day comes when those that have been returning citizens for 10 years, five years, 10 years, that they, 15, they can drop the returning. Yeah. Yep. I agree too. That's, that's, yep. we got to get society to think that way. Amen. All right. So on, on with the checklist, pre-planning the design, get sponsors, obtain supplies, alert and invite local media, day of event. Am I missing anything that you can, that you can see that we can add to this? And if you don't, can't think of anything now, you can always, mm -hmm. you can always add it because this is a living document and you have editing privileges. So you can, you can add things in here. Mm -hmm. Right after Good. obtain supplies, you might want to add obtain food. Okay. Yeah. Something picnic, refreshments, some generic. Yeah. We we'll said, uh, Harvey, feed them and they will come. <laughs> That's always worked for me. Yeah. That works for me too. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. They'll remember Free the food. event and also the food. <laughs> Free food, yes. <laughs> and, and you might even add children's events as a yeah. children's support events or something. Mm -hmm. make, make sure it's family friendly. Yeah, I'm thinking too, on that same vein, Harvey, when you talk about that, and AJ, you talked about police departments, if they've got anything that's dealing with um, their outreach officers, officer friendly, or things that they're interacting with the children in the schools, that particular officer or that department that interacts with Harvey's uh, point with the uh, young people, that would be the target, yeah. Because they probably have games and stuff like that that they've had played with, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. And we- well, if that that's a Friday, so it's a school day. So won't most kids be in school? Should be. Well, <laughs> well they'll yeah. be out. They'll, well, on the East Coast, they'll be out. So you're right. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, we're, we're looking at is the possibility of having some of the locations actually being at schools. Mm. So that's an activity that uh, the school could adopt and, you know, do it right there on campus. Okay. Okay. Um, how hard is it to get, um, let's say that uh, activities are going on during the, during the school day, how hard is it to get a school to um, allow a group of students to go, you know, as a, as an off, campus activity uh, to spend their day doing something like that as community service? I don't uh, think I have much trouble getting that done here with uh, YCS schools. Okay. We have a pretty amazing. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just said having, having been married to, uh, having being married, I can't say been, having being married <laughs> to a retired teacher. Uh, you get in trouble now. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble when I say that. Um, the sort of way they can get it on the school calendar would be one that I'm thinking about. And then also maybe uh, aligning it up with the uh, principal of that school and the teachers and all. So the sooner they, we can make a contact, um, 
that could it can work. Yeah, just the sooner they they know, uh, the better. I would agree with that. I think it's going to vary a lot from school to school, but the, the sooner they know, and then the fact that it's on a Friday, which is uh, a, a less important academic day at a lot of schools. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. Harvey. It might be good to get to the school boards early so that the principal that we go to request permission for the particular school has school board support. Mm -hmm. So school board early yeah. might be good. And the other thing when I'm thinking about kids, it would be really good to make sure we, the police officers, the law enforcement people know that their families are invited. Mm. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I'm just going to throw these in here. I might move them around, but just to get them on here so we don't forget. Mm -hmm. Let me let me get this totally right in my mind. So the activity there will be actually be the activity of painting the mural on the 17th mm -hmm. on the Friday, or and or unveiling the mural, if the, say the mural was done the Thursday night over into Friday, or you want all well, of, you yeah. want it actually being painted or unveiled. Yeah. Yeah. We want the work to be done on that day. So on that day. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. So from, you know, from like, if they want to start at midnight, I mean, it, it, you know, it should only take four or five hours to, you know, to, to really knock out most of the work. Um, so we, we, we want the exercise to be so that everybody around the world, everybody throughout the country and around the world knows that they're all doing it at the same time. Say, you know, same time, meaning same day, right? Mm -hmm. that, that they're all participating. Same 24 hour in period, okay. Yeah, so that, that unity that that will bring. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. We got about four minutes before we wrap up, trying to be punctual here to respect your day. Um, so homework. Um, Feel free to add any further thoughts in the checklist or anywhere else. Make sure you get your contact information in there. Please make sure you ask a few people to, uh, to join a committee or even lead a group. And um, hopefully we'll get uh, five or 10 of these states filled in between now and next week and 10 to 20 the following week. And then we can start to nail down some locations, find some sponsors. Um, Shannon, maybe maybe you and I can talk about um, trying to find some national sponsors as well. Maybe there's some companies out there that um, could supply pizza for each location, or you know stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Get Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> they need some good publicity right now. <laughs> they need some yeah. loving care. <laughs> yeah, they need to take that high fructose corn syrup out their products. <laughs> That's true. They sure do. <laughs> <laughs> they sure do. Yeah. I might have to put some uh, personal um persuasions aside and let them spend some money with us <laughs> love covers a multitude of sins <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Red or no love. <laughs> So, so we should have a sub slogan of offset your corporate sin. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I'm hearing? That's good. That's good. That's a good one, Harvey. <laughs> Atone for your corporate sin. <laughs> um, by the way, um, be because of... Uh, uh, Marsh's forthcoming generous uh, sponsorship. It, it hasn't it hasn't come yet, but we are working through the working through the process of getting that completed. Um, we'll have a little bit of money to, uh, to 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 make sure that if there's a group that simply does not have any resources and they want to participate, we will not let lack of resources become a roadblock will make sure that they get what they need to um to get this done so fyi everyone is welcome um and i really want to encourage um groups in you know places that don't have a lot of resources especially encourage them to participate in this so all right folks any closing thoughts? Appreciate your time. Everybody good? I think yep. I'm good. Okay. Cool. So um, this is open to you. Um, add, add thoughts in here anytime. Um, see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right. Everybody. Wonderful. Happy fourth, everyone. As they say. Have a safe and happy Independence Day. Happy and Fourth. Guess, and guess what? We can really celebrate independence with the federal government recognizing Juneteenth. And it's a true Independence Day. So. Amen. Yes. Amen. Great right. point, Lois. Thank you.